Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma and this is Alex. This is one of those videos where you guys are gonna want to grab a drink. I don't care what time it is. You know when your best mate turns up and he's like, grab a drink, and I wasn't even thinking about having a drink? <laughs> We're your best mates today, right? Pause this video, go grab a drink, come and join us because this is gonna be an episode of Tipsy Beans. So the first thing you want to do for anyone out there who's never ordered a cider before, especially a lot of our overseas viewers, first things first, find a pub of course. We are going to start off with our first pint here at the YHA Hostel. So when you go into a bar, the first thing is you want to look for these bad boys, the on tap beers and ciders and come up to the bar and you've got to order yourself a pint of cider. Here they have two choices. They've got Adelstones, no idea where that's from. But Orchard Pig over here is quite proudly stating that it is rooted in Somerset. So I think we need to try one of those. Two pigs, please. So that first pint went down like an absolute dream. And now we have taken ourselves through the cold, miserable weather outside and come to a place that was recommended to us by the staff at the YHA. Um, it's called The Stable or just Stable. They specialize here specifically in cider and pizza. We're not here for the pizza. We've been to Italy recently, as you know, so we have had our pizza fix. However, cider on the other hand, we have been seriously lacking in recent months. So, we have decided to come to try their tasting board that they have. They have a cider slider, as they call it. They give you five glasses. Each of them is one third of a pint because a pint in the UK is generally what you drink cider and beer in. And as you can see, all these ciders are different colors. This is the range of different ciders you get. range. So behind the bar, they have about a bazillion boxes of cider. They have cider on tap. This is like a cider paradise for those of you out there who love it. Um, so we've come here, we've gone for the tasting board. Um, they've given us a list of all the different ciders here numbered and they have little numbers along the front so we can have a little try of each of these, see what we like best. We are not going to pretend that we are connoisseurs of cider, we know what's good, but <laughs> we do know how to kickstart this video and that is if we drink all of these five ciders in under five minutes. <laughs> we're setting ourselves a mini challenge. So, we have ourselves a timer that we're gonna, oh, we can't show you guys. There we go. Okay, we now have five minutes. Start the time lapse, guys. Let's go. Side note for anyone who doesn't realize but cider can range from anything from about 5% to about 8 or 9%. I think I just got a strong one. This one is gross. <laughs> Twenty-five seconds to spare. We're outside and it's still cold and miserable. But now we're tipsy, so we don't really care about the weather anymore. We are making our way to the oldest pub here in Bristol, the Hatchet Inn. And I was reading that it was built in 1606. And some of you watching were like, "Wow!" And I'm honestly thinking, that isn't that old. <laughs> I think in the UK or in Europe in general, we're really spoiled for having our old buildings preserved until now. So I was just reading about the history of cider and apparently the Romans came to England in 50 BC, that's right BC, and they had discovered that the English were already making cider. They were making Mental. it in Rome, we were making it in England, 50 BC. Mental. So 1605 was basically yesterday. <laughs> 
all the information aside, I'm freezing and I am in need of some more cider. So let's head over to the oldest pub in Bristol. <laughs> So, the Hatcher Inn is a proper British pub. There is no hipster bullshit here. This is a proper pub with proper pints. And we have gone for a pint of Thatcher's Haze. And for the locals around, you will know Thatcher's. It's a bit of an institution. Everyone knows and loves Thatcher's. Um, but for those who haven't been to the UK before, if you're going to a pub and you wanna try cider for the first time, order yourself a Thatcher's. We have now come to my second favourite pub in England. Not That's the first. right. No. Number one is in York. It's called <laughs> the King's Arms. If you're in York, go there. Brilliant. Okay, this one actually has a better view though. Look behind us. We are here at the Clifton Suspension Bridge. We've just polished off another cider. So I think Emma now has reached that point of pure drunkenness. This is like the height of Emma. I can hold my drink better than you, mate. Any day. I could drink you on the table. So at this point of the alcohol spectrum. Whoop. Emma. <laughs> oh, it's cold. <laughs> if you just don't say anything, Emma just keeps speaking. Yeah. And something funny eventually comes out. I don't know what you're talking about. It's very cold out here. And you're just looking at me with the camera, expecting me to perform like a dancing monkey. Do you want me to dance? I can dance. I sure can dance. Do you want to tell me something about this bridge? Of course I do, Alex. This bridge, oh yes, that magnificent beauty behind me, was built by the legendary <laughs> Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Sir Isambard. Sir Isambard. Is it Brunel? Yes. Yeah. Isambard <laughs> Brunel. He was an absolute legend of this area. He just liked to build things. He liked railways. I don't mind a good railway. Anyway, Isambard, he just wandered around Bristol basically, making railways, building bridges, doing all kinds of things. And now we all bloody love him, don't we? Do it. He was actually voted the Britain's best Britain. <laughs> Britain's best Britain. Well, that is, that's a title and a half, isn't it? Britain's best Britain. Do you want to tell them about the story that I just told you earlier about my family? Um oh, yes. Alex told me a very interesting tidbit of information earlier. He told me that his granddad is Isambard Kingdom Brunel. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think he might be telling fibs. Okay, the truth of that story is that actually my granddad used to own a house that Isambard Kingdom Brunel lived in, in my little hometown of Western Supermare. He was never him. <laughs> Whatever, that's what you told me earlier. Okay, so now, where are the beans going? They've already had a few pints of cider dotted around the city. Where can they possibly be going next? The Cory Tap, that's where we're bloody going. Why? Because it hosts some of the strongest cider in Somerset. Oh, we're not in Somerset, we're in Bristol. The strongest cider in Bristol. So we're gonna go there and we're gonna have a few. I think they only sell half pints because that's how strong they are. So we found the quarry tap and it is down a very inconspicuous little street here. It's a tiny little road that I wouldn't have given much thought to, to be honest. However, the strongest cider in Bristol is awaiting us at the oasis at the end of the road. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We are here, we are at the Quarry Tap, and we have ourselves two lots of cider. No, I have not turned into a giant. These are half pint <laughs> sizes. <laughs> so, we have gone for a pint, well, a half pint of the exhibition. The exhibition is 
8.4%. So they're actually only allowed to sell it in half pints. Exhibition is actually made by Thatcher's, which we were talking about earlier, but this is the only pub in the whole world, the whole wide world, that is allowed to sell Exhibition cider because of the strength. And it's lovely. <laughs> Glorious. We are done at the Cory Tap. It is now time to step it up a level. That's why we're going to combine cider with the kind of ship boat experience of Bristol. We're going to merge them together and go to a place called The Apple. It is a bar on a fucking boat. <laughs> <laughs> so upscale and fancy. We better get in there and change things. <laughs> no entry. This way. Well, I have to say that the apple was quite a pleasant experience for cider lovers. And I've been reflecting <laughs> on this drunken refeeling, guys. Refeeling, <laughs> drunken refeeling. Drunken refeeling. <laughs> drunken refeeling. <laughs> I have been drunk it. <laughs> drunk it. <laughs> I have been reflecting on this drunk feeling and I've decided that why are we not drunk all the time? <laughs> like when I'm drunk, all I just think at the same time is like, I just want to be drunk all the time. Why, why aren't we just drunk all the time, guys? Like I realize that it's something that I look down upon in general society. <laughs> but just my general feeling right now is that we should as humans be drunk all the time because I think awesome. all the problems of life will be over. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed the side tour. I'm so cold. I hope you guys all appreciate how cold I am right Honestly, now. the whole night is I just wish... being complaints about how cold Emma I, is I and really getting her warm. I really wish we could be doing this inside but we're too shy to do it around all the cider knobs. Yes, I say cider knobs. All the people who are obsessed with cider who look down at us when making YouTube videos. Fuck you, Cider Knobs. We want to make videos about cider. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up on the like button. We Not love that. Not a thumbs down. Some people, one in particular gets confused with a thumb up and a thumb down. No mate, it's not a thumb down, it's a thumb up. Leave us a comment. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna come back Tell us video. what we should have been doing rather than getting drunk. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't already, push that subscribe button. And we have to say right now, a very drunken beans out. <laughs>